I was asked to talk about some um, really exciting new things that are happening. This is actually a, a, uh, uh, a global uh, effort to recreate information and communication technology so that anyone could walk up to any technology and it would just change into a form that they could use and understand. Okay? And so the easiest way to do this is to start off with a little uh, video, which, uh, let's see if we can get that there. Uh, and then I'm going to come and show you kind of a demonstration for what this might look like for an older American. Oops. I'm not going to get anywhere without sound. We all use technology every day. A person at a library computer. A person using a mobile phone. A person buying a train ticket. And we're using it to do more things all the time. Library card catalog becomes a computer. Some of the things we used to do face to face, we now do with automated systems. Ticket booth becomes a ticket machine. For most of us, those systems are okay most of the time. And when there are problems, we can find a way to get along. Glare on ticket machine screen. Hand shields the screen so it can be read. But those of us with disabilities often run into situations where the technology doesn't work well enough to meet our abilities. Person with low vision sees a blurry ticket machine screen. In some cases, we can use assistive technology to bridge the gap. Assistive technology, or AT, can provide text for speech. Video chat with captions. Turn text into speech. The weather today will be mostly sunny. Or make words on a screen easier to read. Computer login screen in high contrast. Whatever the user needs to accomplish a task. Unfortunately, we don't all have the assistive technology we need, and we can't always take it with us to use anywhere we want. Imagine if you could pick up any device anywhere, and it would automatically adapt to you. Person picks up device and it changes size. Imagine someone who is usually confused by technology. Now every computer looks like their personal device. Simple, with just the controls and features they need. Complicated computer screen changes to a simple version. Imagine a student who has to use computers in different labs and classrooms. If all of them worked exactly as needed. Student in two classrooms, each computer becomes accessible as she needs it. There is a way to offer accessibility solutions to more people in more situations. We call it the Global Public Inclusive Infrastructure, or GPII. The GPII will use the cloud, the electronic networks that power most of our information services, and the intelligence and electronic products themselves cloud with server symbols and dotted lines show information flow. Right now, we use the cloud to store information, transmit it to the right destination, and convert it from one form into another. Information moves into, around, and back out of the cloud to various devices. The GPII will take the same cloud idea and use it to support accessibility. Users will start with a wizard that helps them choose how they want their personalized interface to look and work person at computer making selections and store that profile in the cloud so that it's available from then on profile information flows into the cloud accessibility developers will create tools for the toolbox that address those needs accessibility software flows into the cloud the GPII will store information about devices their uses and features device information flows into the cloud then when a user needs an accessibility feature, the GPII will take the right user profile and features, check the device, and guide the device in using its own features to meet the user's needs. Accessibility information flows from the cloud to the phone. Screen changes to large print. The GPII will automatically apply the right tool to whatever device the person is using, wherever it is. So the interface will work the right way.
The same person now sees large print on a train ticket machine. The GPII will be great for users. It will support independence with enabling technology. When you need it, where you need it, how you need it. There's no need to explain, negotiate, or justify anything. It just works. All of the information will be kept private and secure. A traveler gets the right interface at airport checking, information kiosk, and the seat back display on the plane. The GPII will be great for society. It will offer wider participation in education, employment, commerce, and our communities. Many people on the street with the school, offices, stores, and community center. The GPII will provide developers with the tools and parts they need to develop AT more easily and at lower cost. Developers can then upload their products to the GPII marketplace, quickly making them available globally. Developer creates new AT, uploads it to the cloud, and people around the world access it. The GPII will give mainstream technology companies an easy way to match accessibility features to their products and services as they're being designed. Product designers upload its features to the cloud. Where professional services are needed, the GPII will give counselors, therapists, and educators more options for evaluation and management. Client and therapist work together on the wizard. The GPII will let schools, libraries, and other public locations serve everyone more easily. Every user will get the interface they're already familiar with. The weather today will be mostly sunny. Library computer shows low vision interface, then screen reader interface for two different users. Employers will be able to accommodate new employees. They can promote and relocate employees without having to reconfigure or reinstall a lot of technology. Employee gets promoted, new workstation automatically has the accessible interface. The GPII will offer a new way of providing accessibility when, where, and how it's needed. We're just getting started building it. GPII construction site. We'll be working closely with consumer advocates, AT and mainstream technology companies, and other stakeholders to make sure it meets their needs. The GPII needs the help of policymakers and leaders. Capital building with policy leaders. We hope that you find the GPII as exciting as we do and spread the word. Now we want to hear your ideas about the GPII, what it means to you, and how we can work together. Expanding circle of people discussing the GPII. The, uh, so the, let's see if I can get this to fit the screen a little better here. There we go. Um, so this is, uh, we just got word the other day that uh, $11 million, $7.5 billion, I mean, million, million, million uh, euro a project has just been uh, funded Cloud for All in uh, Europe, 31 member consortium. Uh, we had... Uh, 10 million a year for five years in the United States to be working on this uh, in Obama's budget as it went up the hill, but that's, of course, gone. Um, they're back in uh, uh, trying to retrench and get some more support back into it. But the, this is great, but what does it really mean and what does it look like in a concrete term? So let's just take one example. We have an elder who uh, wants to communicate with their nieces and nephews, and the they, they used to write letters years ago, but of course they've stopped doing that. They won't write any letters. And, and whenever Grandma says, well, why don't you write to me? They say, well, Grandma, get on email. And, um, and they used to send pictures. And they say, well, get on Picasso. Or you know what, Grandma, you ought to get on it. Get on I am and chat with us. And, uh, and so Grandma, you know, she tried to stay away from those things as far as long as she could because they basically make her feel stupid. Actually, they make all of us feel stupid, but... Uh, some of us who haven't uh, had a chance to get a, uh, experience with them. So finally one day she decides to sit down and try it. And so they sit down, and this is what they call up on the screen and say, okay, now this is email and Picasso and chat. And this middle window, and Grandma goes, what window? And you say, well, this is this square in the middle. We call it a window. 
And she says, why? It, never mind, never mind. Anyway, let me scroll down. She says, scroll? Well, yeah, see, there's this thing on the, it looks like an elevator on the side. And if you grab it with a mouse, grab it with a mouse, yeah, and you drag it down, the page goes up. You pull it down, the page goes up. Mm -hmm. um, oh, never mind that. You can use the arrow. What arrow? Well, it's not really an arrow. It's a triangle, but we call it an arrow. But anyway, if you push on the up arrow, she says, it goes down, Grandma. She says, do you want some cookies? And she gets up, <laughs> and she walks out, and that's the last time you see her. So instead of that, with something like the GPII, you can have it so that something looks more like what she's used to. So this is just a little a dongle. It could be in the cloud. This is because Grandma can't even sit to launch a browser and type something in. So this actually just types a little string of keys for you. So it helps for people who can't remember things. So she just plugs it into a computer, and it types a little set of uh, strings. And what it does is it gets rid of all this complexity, and it calls up an interface which looks more like what she wants. OK? Now, and on there it says, because she can't remember today what you tell her tomorrow. So right on the middle when you get this first time, it says, you know, touch. And use it with a touch screen that works best. Um, it says, touch the mailbox for your mail. So she touches the mailbox, and she gets mail. And she goes, oh, what's this? And she touches the mail, and it opens up, and it actually looks like mail. And she looks at it, and she says, I don't understand what this is about, about a dog getting, oh, mom, it's a joke. Oh, OK, what do I do? Ah, that's what I want to do, throw away. And so she throws it away, <laughs> and she opens the next one up. And uh, Granny, next week, I'm really excited about it. Could you join us? Sure. Now what do I do? So there's no buttons or icons. She looks around. It says keep, reply, or throw away. Well, she already used the throw away one. Let's try reply. So she clicks on reply, and up comes an email, which is cut off on this screen here, but it's not on mine. And uh, she would just answer. It doesn't say hi, Becky, at gobbledygook, gobbledygook. It says hi, Becky. She says, sure. I would love to come, uh, Granny. Now what do I do? I hit send. And that one of the other things with email is you hit send, and then you're supposed to just sort of believe that something happened with it. And it doesn't. It just it, they hit the send, and then what happens? So you hit send on this. And instead, it goes into an envelope, and it goes into a little mail truck, and it goes off the screen. Okay, So she clicks on this book. Now, you notice nothing disappeared. It just sort of moved over. All right. So things don't disappear and jump, and no windows cover stuff up, and where did it go? Everything is a continuity of existence. So I click on Lake Mills, and up come some pictures. And if I click on a picture, the picture comes up. So you know, any picture I want to see, I just click on it, and it comes to the front. If I want to see a different set, I click on it. Pictures move. and. Uh, so I want to, uh, uh, that's actually my grandma, or my mom, actually. So I call her grandma too much now. Um, <laughs> the, uh, if you want to call somebody, she clicks on the address book, and it comes up like this, OK? And the, you click on something, and it says, write email to Anna, call Anna, view photos, or chat. All right? And if, she, if, if the person can chat, it says, available for chat. It's not a little green dot next to a name that they're supposed to know is a secret code for the fact that somebody's online. But today it's blue. But you know, what, what's blue mean? You know? um, so it says chat. When it's not, there's a big red bar that comes across as not available so that they don't get confused. If there aren't any pictures, there's no button there saying there are pictures. She clicks call it calls. If she clicks write an email, pops up the email. You already saw that go by. So the whole idea is that everything is, is continuous and now, when I pull this out, it goes back. And now I can go over and plug this into your laptop, and I can finish writing the letter, OK? <laughs> so the idea is that it's in the cloud. And so this, what you just saw, isn't actually on this laptop. It's in the cloud. So grandma can take this, and she can go to her kid's house. And she starts to write a letter. She's got to go. She unplugs it. She goes to the back to a, a, a senior center. She plugs it in. And she can finish typing her letter that she started. And that letter shows up on the screen. So it's continuity. But this concept, now, 
This looks like a, an app that we wrote that makes email and stuff simple, right? But it's not. It is actually a different on front end. That mailbox is getting its mail from Gmail. The pictures you saw are coming from Picasa. This is not a new set of programs. It is a simpler interface to already existing programs. Don't create a new world for them, but create a new, give them something they can reach. And this can now be in their reach. And so once it's in their reach, they go, yeah, but I can't, someone said to do this. So we call this the easy one communicator. It's part of an easy one, two, three kind of concept, which is you get one, and then you add some complexity, and you add some. Now, some people I know, this is the end. You know, this, they're not going to get farther than this. And each day, they will rediscover this. And each day, they will enjoy those same pictures all over again because they won't remember having looked at them yesterday. Okay? But they'll still remember all those people, and they still will have conversations with them because that was from before. And they can go back. All right? So at any rate, this is just a quickie look uh, to give you an idea of some of the things that are happening um, in this area. So there's an effort called Raising the Floor International that is uh, leading the effort to build what we're calling a global public inclusive infrastructure. And the whole concept is you figure out what works for people, and then you make it so that the world changes. And it's not just this. It's got to apply to eventually to thermostats and ovens and washing machines and all of the rest of the technology that we're quickly changing from something we all could use into something that looks like an oscilloscope. Thank you. Thank you.